it was 1985. The amateur adventurer was giving way to the professional ocean racer, and in their wake came the corporate sponsors and the celebrities. Simon Le Bon and Drum brought up a whole new dimension to the race. Here was a pop star, a well-known name, right across the world, uh, coming and doing the race. I thought it was a high-risk situation at the beginning when I first heard about it, especially when I met Simon for the first time. His uh, rock star get-up, but it all transpired to be very enjoyable indeed. He was a very uh, intellectual sort of guy, and when he was with the crew on the sailboat, he really was a different person, I think, and I think he really enjoyed that a lot. The race began with the usual carnage, inevitable when untried designs went offshore. And for those who did make it through the first leg, they knew worse was to come. We said in Cape Town, we don't think Drum is safe to go in the Southern Ocean. So the crew said, well, we're not going there if not the designer of the boat is coming. So our skipper called up the designer of the boat, who was Ron Holland, and he said, no way I'm going, but I can send my brother. And we said, well, okay, he's sending his brother, then he's probably okay. <laughs> the Rumble World Race is a very punishing race, and it punishes the equipment pretty much the most, I think. I think that people tend to, you know, people, people are strong in, in comparison to, the, to the, the, the equipment they use. As the fleet rounded Cape Horn and headed for Punta del Este, Uruguay, it was Duran Duran frontman Simon Le Bon who was putting the race on the front pages. We've had big waves, we've had little waves, we've had a lot of wind, we've had no wind, we've had whales, we've had dolphins. This is a fantastic day in my life. As Drum raced its way to an eventual top 10 placing, it was France's Lionel Pion and his crew on board L'Esprit d'Equipe who took the overall victory and the trophy from Princess Diana.